He's got the whole world in his hands. In his hands. He's got the little bitty baby in his hands. In his hands. He got the entire world. Entire world in his hands. In his hands, he's got you and me in my family. Good evening and welcome, welcome, welcome to another Bible study night here at New Light International Outreach. I am Minister LaQuentin Robinson and I'm joined by our amazing, powerful pastor and leader, Pastor Lily H. Weaver. Come on in, look, welcome everybody. We thank God for him gracing you to bless us tonight and just be here with us as we dig into the word of God. All month this month, we are focusing and talking on resisting the devil, just understanding the power, the authority, and, and everything that you operate in. And we wanna make sure that we get our minds correct and in the rightful place so we can go out and do what it is God has for us to do. So as you come in here and join us tonight, be prepared, be ready for whatever dynamic expression our pastor has for everybody. And we wanna start the way that we all Always do by going to the throne of the Lord in prayer so if you would pray with me praise God father we thank you for allowing us to assemble here tonight we thank you for everybody that is in the building as well as joining us online we just glorify you father for being the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords for orchestrating our lives and for allowing us to be yours and rest in your bosom as we come together tonight father to reason your word we ask that you allow your Holy Spirit to minister to allow the words to come off the pages and get imparted into the hearts of your people that we can take something different and live be and think different we ask that you be glorified with everything that comes forth tonight we ask you for this and all things in Jesus mighty and holy name amen and amen Praise God. Praise God. Good evening and welcome again to New Light. I am Pastor Lily Weaver and it's my pleasure being here. Um, as Minister Robinson said, this whole month we're focusing on um, resisting the devil. Amen. You know, last week we talked about knowing that we're not alone, knowing that even though it feels like we're by ourselves, we're not. He promised he would never leave us nor forsake us. And I love the scripture that said there's more with us than there are with them. You know, only one third of the, of the um, angels fall, fell and two thirds stayed with God. So two thirds beat out one third every day. So we got more angels working for us than against us. Mm -hmm. Amen. And tonight again, I am, um, uh, today something interesting happened to me. And um, pretty much, I was gonna talk about being real. Um, I had a maybe 21, 22 year old girl came, I'm sorry, young lady, came to my office and she said to me, she said, uh, Miss Weaver, I want to talk with you, but it's not about work. She said, but I, I really want to get your perspective. She's 20 something years old. And she said, she felt like she was at a standstill at 21. She said, I feel like I'm at a standstill. And wow. I just, she said, I look at you and it, it seems like you got, you know, you, you got, you, you made it. Seems like life has really been good to you. Amen. And I just want to know your perspective on, on what I'm going through. And so I'm looking at her now, we got 40 years different. And I'm looking at her and I've been saved longer than she's been on earth. Ooh. <laughs> so I had to go back to those days before I got saved. And it took me a minute to go back, but mm -hmm. I had to relate to her before I got saved, the mistakes I made, right. you know, being a single parent, you know, living with my mom, working on a job, you know, wanting um, to get my own place, wanting to have my own, you know, not want to be treated like a child when you're in your mom's house. I don't care how old you are, they think you're still a baby. Facts. They may even call you baby, you know, and that, that's foul, but that's what they do. Yes. It's hard for a grown um, parent to look at a grown child and look at them as they're grown. Parent. So as long as you're in your parents' house, you're gonna be called a child. Uh oh. And so she's she was dealing with, her mother still looking at her as a little girl and she's raising her little girl. And she's just like, is it ever gonna change? You know, she's in school, she's working and she's raising a child. And I had to let her know that where she is is where I was 40 years ago. Amen. I, and I had to explain to her what she felt because I felt those same things. So I had to get myself out of this, 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 um, this, this spiritual thing. And I had to say, well, what you're going through is what I went through before Jesus. And so I understand you are wanting to party because that was me. I understand right. you are wanting to you know, say a few words, choice words to your parents because that was me. You know, I, I understand how tired we get you know at working and don't see where there's going to be an end to our job so that was me and so a lot of times when people come to us can can we just 
Can we be real? Can we just cut out all the other, you know, spiritual, well, you know, God bless you and it's going to be okay. Can we just be real? This Amen. baby needed to hear how I overcame. And I mm -hmm. told her, I said, I didn't always make it out. I said, sometimes I felt the suicide thoughts. Right. Mm -hmm. I that said part. it. That part. Mm -hmm. Sometimes yeah. I felt like I wanted to kill somebody else. Yeah. yeah. Well, I said it. Attempted it. <laughs> sometimes I wanted to curse other people out. And sometimes I did. Uh-oh. But... God's hand had been on me. I said, the only thing that really kept me was I knew like every month or every other month I went to church. I didn't go every Sunday. I went like every other month. Amen. I just felt like I had to get close to God. And I believe God had a call in my life even when I was in, in, in my stupor. That's it. And what happens after, we talked for about 20 minutes and after I got done, she looked at me, she goes, you know what? I feel better. She didn't say pastor. She said, Miss Weaver, thank you for sharing your life with me. The Bible says we're saved by the blood of the Lamb and, the and by the, I want to say true words. Amen. Yeah. Not just words of a testimony, because sometimes we'll testify and we'll testify parts of it. Yeah. yeah. We don't tell people, Minister Robinson, the truth. I don't want people to see me vulnerable. Yeah. yeah. I don't want you to see me less than what you see me now. Mm -hmm. But I, mm -hmm. I, was, I, didn't, I, didn't, I wasn't born like this. Right. I had to come from somewhere, you know, and if I don't tell you the truth, then how are you going to aspire to become better? If I, you think that I'm all, I always had it together. Mm -hmm. Amen. Can you, have you ever talked to somebody who, who could, you couldn't relate, relate to? Yeah. You told them what was going on with you and they're looking at you like, well, get over it. Yeah. You know, and that, that song, like that woman said, pick up your feelings. <laughs> Uh-oh. Pick up my feelings. <laughs> you know, I, I want to hurt somebody right now. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm ready to, Minister Robinson, I'm ready to just leave. I'm ready to even, you know, run into a wall or something. So in order for us to be a light, we got to be real. Amen. And tonight is mainly talking about, you know, we have to learn how to daily confess and, and crucify our flesh. Yeah. Don't look at yourself like you all that, like you made it. Because we all, we still struggling. We still, the word of God said, working this thing out with fear yeah. and trembling. Yeah. So if you don't be real with people, then how are they going to know that there is, there is, there's hope? That there is a way out of what they're going through. Minister, how you, would you, I mean, how do you feel about that? I mean, I'm talking to her mm -hmm. as a person, not as a pastor, not even as her boss. But as somebody who lived that life, I said, girl, you're taking me back 40 years now. Yeah. Because I'm 60 and I was in my 20s and I, 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 I did all that, yeah. Erica. I, I dropped it like it was hot. Mm -hmm. I was in the, in, in the, in the brick house contest. Mm -hmm. I won a lot of them because I was fine. So <coughs> don't y'all hate, but I did that. And, so, and what, Monica? I ain't had no sense. Amen. But now that I'm here, it's like I can look back. And so the world don't owe me nothing. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I missed out on anything, y'all. Mm -hmm. And I thank God for gracing me that he didn't mm -hmm. allow me to die when I was crazy. Amen. Does that make sense? Amen. So we're going to get to the thing. You want something? I want to just keep, I want to put that out there. Amen. Y'all all right? This, tonight. They're looking at me laughing in the church. But a lot of times church folks, I want to tell you the truth. Because, they, you on. know, they want you to see all their good stuff. Not yeah. realizing that all y'all wouldn't say when y'all was born. Some of y'all was born in mess and stayed in mess until you turned about 30. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. she she Go ahead, Mr. Robinson. For real, that's oh, the no, truth. You, you telling the truth? I mean, listen, if, if all of us are honest, Pastor, we've all been there. It don't matter if you got saved when you were 14 or 40. We've all been at a place where we, 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 we did some stuff we know we had no business Come doing. Come on. We acted and thought in a way we know we ain't had no business doing. And I, I, I believe that uh, it, it's going to take you, you, you got to finish your story. Like you, you told the woman, what? You told the woman that, no, I, I literally was who you are. Knowing I was, that she right. see you now as the pastor. Right. And what happened? What's that? You told her. I've been with right exactly where you are. And what was the outcome of your conversation? Pastor? My outcome was it gave her hope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, she smiled when she mm -hmm. left me. She thanked me. She goes, I appreciate you opening your, your life up for me. Right. Because I never would have imagined that you are experiencing what I'm experiencing right now. Yeah. And so watching you now yeah. and knowing that you went through what I'm going through right now, mm -hmm. it's given me hope. Mm -hmm. It's allowed me to understand that even though it looked like I have no way out, it looks like I'm in a dead end, there is hope because I'm watching you now. And yeah. what I'm looking at you, it is, it's inspiring me yeah. to keep going, to right. stay in school. It's inspiring me to, you know, to, to be nice to my mama, you know, Amen. let her have that. It's inspiring Amen. me, you know, to know that it's going to get better. So that's what's the outcome minister. As she right. looked and she told me, she goes, I thank you for taking the time, not just wasting her time, but taking the time mm -hmm. to break it down. To be real. And help her understand Girl, you're not by yourself. Amen. <laughs> you know, girl, we all go through this, but none of us talk about that because I don't want you to look at me kind of, well, well, she, yeah, she did it. She, mm -hmm. she did it. Praise God. 
It was me. It was me. What? It was me. What was that, Monica? That's why I keep my Facebook pictures up. So people could understand. We, y'all, we, yeah. we have been saved by grace. Amen. None of us earned this, and, and we didn't deserve it. Amen. But God knew. I think Minister Robinson said that on one service. Before we were born, Erica, he already knew. Mm -hmm. But we felt that we have to earn our salvation. No, we did because we couldn't. No. Yeah. We couldn't because, can I be honest? I want to be honest. Yeah. Because when I was out there doing what I did, y'all, it felt good. Mm -hmm. I had a good time. Mm -hmm. I had a good time. I really did with your man too. I had a good time. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I did. I, I really did. I really <laughs> did. Praise God, Jesus. I thank God that he saved me and I just had a good time. Go ahead, minister. Y'all see how she do me? How she? It's real. <laughs> For, I also want to take a moment to say hi, everybody. <laughs> Sister Tori, Tori, Sister you know, Erica, you know Minister, uh, Minister Little, mm -hmm. uh, Sister Woodson. Mm -hmm. We just thank God for each of you being here with us and joining us. And, <laughs> and I they, told need, you, they need to be real too, because a lot of times, y'all, we need to just be real. Come on. Thank Amen. Minister. Amen. <laughs> so we talk a lot about testifying. We talk a lot about the power of our testimonies. I think the, the short version of what Pastor Weaver is trying to convey. <laughs> when we tell our truth, if we understand what the word is, and the word says that people's lives are changed, that people are saved by yes, the words of our testimony. Of our testimonies. As long as you are embarrassed to tell the truth mm -hmm. embarrassed to say i wasn't always only having sex with my spouse oh come on i wasn't always the truth teller that you think i am now mm -hmm. i wasn't always able to hold back my curse words right. pastor weaver tells us all the time she used to create her own because the curse words that exist weren't enough to express <laughs> exactly how she felt so i say all that to say like is there people in our lives or people in your life specifically that you might not understand, like, God, why do you have this person on my path? On. Why do you even have this person on Come my on. job? Mm -hmm. Why is this person in my family? Why, why are they connected to me? And it might be because you can really relate to something that they're dealing with. And you might not even, you, sometimes we convince ourselves that because we're delivered, that it never happened. Right. Uh -uh. That because it's clean, mm -hmm. that it never got dirty. Come right. On. Like We convince ourselves that because you washed the plate, that it wasn't a mess last night. But the truth is. We are only saved by grace, by grace only yourself. clean by the blood. If it was not for Jesus, if it was not for God, we would be still in the same position, same mindset, way of thinking, busting windows out of cars. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't be no different. Mm -hmm. Right. And we joke all the time about like if you really had that, that type of self-control where you could really change yourself, you would have stuck to the diet that you said you're going to have in January. Oh, Lord. But you didn't. Why? Not because something's wrong with you. It's because you're not supposed to do stuff like that of your own power. Praise God. God is the one that gets us in a place where we're ready to do what it is God has for us to do. Yeah, but it's dirty. You know, I, I love that sermon with my son and I voice on there. Praise mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. But I think, like, like, like I said, there's so many people that have gotten comfortable test the lying. Test the lying is the Facebook profile picture. Right. That's the test the lying. Because that's the picture you took after you went through 40 pictures and you chose mm -hmm. the background is perfect mm -hmm. in this one, mm -hmm. the angle is perfect in this one, my waist looks snatched in this one, mm -hmm. my hair on point in this. So that's the test to lie. When the truth is that first one you took before you knew you had that on your face, before you knew your hair was out of place, <laughs> before you forgot, before you remembered to suck it in, like that's the truth. <laughs> And that's the, that's the one you got to show people. That's, that's right. the one you got to express. And my wife and I are intentional. We joke about it. But like our conversion was, was drastic. Because when I say like people were in the world, there were people that were in the world, but we were the ones that dictated the direction of the world. Like we were so in the world that we led them. Like not just followed worldly people. We were worldly leaders. Amen. <laughs> so we leave like all people. You can go on my, on my Facebook from, you know, a decade ago. And you see me in the club lit and turned up. You see mm -hmm. me. For with one woman in the picture this month and another woman in the picture next month. Why? Because that's the lifestyle that I lived and I didn't want to delete or erase the message that God was stirring up on the inside of me. So we have to remember that it's not as powerful when you erase the message that God has on the inside of you. Imagine if we read the Bible and half the stuff that David did was erased. All we got was him slaying Goliath and him being the king. Right, come on. If, if the rest of the message wasn't there, it wouldn't be as impactful. So are you ready to make the real impact that God is trying to make with your life. If you've been trying to figure out what it is, look, the truth is the impact that God is trying to make with your life. Amen. Testimony instead of testify. Praise God. Amen. And if you know, yeah. come on. Praise mm -hmm. God. Y'all heard that. If you know, you know. You know. Amen. You had and, to be and getting back, praise God, to the message tonight. Y'all, mm -hmm. we're going to go to Mark chapter um, 14. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the most powerful for me. Um, scriptures because it talks about the sacrifice that Jesus made. It talks about what he had to go through um, for us. 
yeah. know, it gives us that whole um, scenario of, of that night, the day before, and what they were doing, um, conspiring to kill him, and how his disciples were there supposed to have his back, but they were asleep. You know, and, and so it just puts me in mind right now of even, can I say this here before you eat, Melissa Robinson, even when I heard yesterday, and y'all, this, this, this did something to me, that the church is reopening. The church, I'm sorry, the, the world, the world is reopening. So I'm saying if the world is reopening, then why the church still closed? Mm. Uh-oh. If the world is reopening, why is the church I'm gonna sit still, my closed. Teeth. still closed? And better yet, why are we still sleeping? Mm -mm. You know, I think the sermon that I heard bef before was um, wake up and stay woke. Amen. It's time for us to wake up. It's time for us to do what? Stay woke. Amen. The world is, is reopening. And, and I know um, even since the 4th of July, we've, we've heard a, a lot more cases of COVID because of, um, I guess, the new variant, the Delta variant. So I'm saying, please be careful. So if you're, if you're going to be out there, um, still do the PPEs, wear your face mask, wash your hands, and just be, be mindful. Yeah. But the world is still reopening, knowing that that new variant is out there. Mm -hmm. And here we are still in the house of God, afraid to come to church, right. afraid to you know, do things that we were doing before. Come on, can, can, we, can we take stuff back? Mm -hmm. Can we take back everything that Emmy thought he stole from us? Because God didn't shut down ever. You know, he, he said he'll never leave us nor forsake us, but we allow the world to dictate to us how we should worship. Yeah where we should worship. We did that, y'all. We, we, for me, we cowered out. Can I be honest? I was part of that. I had to repent. So when he had, you know, when he told me, well, if the world's reopening, then why are you still closed? And when the, when the Super Bowl decided uh -oh. to still have Super Bowl that yeah. Sunday is when the, this church opened. Because if the Super Bowl football didn't close down, yeah. then why is worship closing down? Mm -hmm. So that did something to me. Minister, I'm just, I'm just saying right here, it's time for us to, to, to pay attention. Amen. Stop mm -hmm. us to, to wake up. And even I was, I was looking at the news also this morning and it talks about how they have defunded the police. Yeah. Now, y'all, and y'all might be okay with that, but it's like a billion dollars have been taken back from the police officers. And so what they're doing is they're quitting. Right. They're saying, if you don't think that we're worth paying, then we're not going to take care of you. And so what happened is, the, I guess right now, it's everything, Monica, the murder rate, the, mm -hmm. all of that has, has, has risen. And yeah. there is no police officer to take care of you because they're home chilling. Yeah. We, we, felt, we felt that, you know, we shouldn't pay them. Okay, so they felt we ain't going to take care of you. Amen. And so I don't know if they understood that that was going to happen when they did all that protesting to defund the police. Okay, you're not paying them, so they are not protecting you. So crime rate is, is on a, 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 is on a on high. A it's, yeah. it's like 70% more people right now are being murdered, homicide, rape, um, robbed, mm -hmm. and, and there is no, you can call who? Call, there's nobody to call. 911 is not answering, there's nobody to send to your house. Amen. Because we're not paying them. So I'm just saying it's time for us to, to pay attention and be wise. Yeah. You know, the, the Bible talks about that we are destroyed for the lack of wisdom. So I think a lot of times we'll do stuff not realizing what's going to happen. I guess the repercussions minister, right. not the consequence. So we wanted to do that, but then we didn't realize that when we stop paying folks, they're going to stop working. And mm. so that's what's happened. You stop paying them so they're not working. And so we got to pray now that God will send men and women that who wants to help protect us. Because the police officers right now, we are all over, especially urban areas. Crime rate is on a, is on a very high rate right now, Minister. Um, we're going to go to the book, but I wanted to share that. That was free. Mm. Anything you want to say before we go ahead and read Mark? Mark 14, Minister um, Shaquille. Mark 14 is where we are. Amen. Go ahead, Minister. Amen. All right. Mark 14, you still want to start at 32? I think so. Okay. They went to the olive grove called Gethsemane. And Jesus said, sit here while I go and pray. He took Peter, James, and John with him, and he became deeply troubled and distressed. He told them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little further and fell to the ground. He prayed that if it were possible, the awful hour awaiting him might pass him by. Abba, Father, he cried out. Everything is possible for you. Please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then he returned and found the disciples asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? 
Couldn't you watch with me even one hour? Keep watch and pray so that you will not give into temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Wow. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, Pastor. Y'all, did y'all hear what he just did? And, and what's interesting to me is before all this happened, all of his disciples told him, that if he had to go somewhere, that they would not deny him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They all said that. I, yeah. I felt maybe they felt that. And that you can find, Minister Robinson, I think up in verse, where is it at, in 31. They all, I know we, we know Peter said that, but they all said it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They all said, well, if you go, um, we'll never deny you. You know, we got your back. We're going to be there for you through thick and thin. You know, we're your ride and die. I'm your day one. How many mm -hmm. people have told you that? And when you got in trouble, they bailed on you. Well, better yet, when you lost your money, oh, and you couldn't feed them anymore, and you couldn't take care of them, your friends got real scarce. Come How on, many y'all can attest to that? Come on. As long as you're taking care of folks, oh, you got a whole, you're popular. Hallelujah. As long as you let them eat off of you, you know, uh, you got a whole bunch of homies. Hallelujah. But as soon as you tell them no, I'm not paying for that anymore. I'm not buying this for you anymore. What they happen is your real friends will. Um, the real friends will stay. The ones that were just there just to be there, they ain't uh -huh. going to stay. So, minister, here we are in, in 31, and they're telling Jesus, look, I got your back. I I'm, we're not going anywhere. You know, you've been teaching us. Mm -hmm. You know, we know you, you are the Christ, as, as, as Peter told him. Yeah. So, so we're going to be there. Yeah. And a yeah. lot of times we believe that in our flesh. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll say stuff, and we, and we hope that we're going to do it, Erica. We just, I hope I'm that strong. Yeah. I, I believe, uh, you know, I, I, I won't hurt you, you know. Well, I hope I won't say nothing bad to you, Monica. <laughs> <laughs> but in the hour, in, in the heat of, of that moment, mm -hmm. uh, Sister, uh, what's your name? Daisy. Mm -hmm. You. In the heat of the moment, we're just like, I don't know where that came from. Oh, I'm so sorry. So, Minister, here we mm -hmm. go. Can you read real quick, 31. This is all oh, yeah. of them talking to Jesus. Oh, yeah. Well, 31 in Mark 14 says, no, Peter declared emphatically, even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And all the others vowed the same. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. They all, and I felt on, at that moment, I believe he felt that. Yeah. Have you ever felt in a moment that you'll be able to handle it? Yeah. That no matter what happens, that you'll be able to take it. Like we do our vows. What would we say? For better and for worse, and for sickness, richer, for sickness poor. and health, for richer and for poor. to death do us part. Yeah. Yeah. Now we say that, but uh -oh. stuff, get bad. stuff start getting real, real bad. bad. Now we believe that we were going to say that the flesh is weak. That's it. We're talking tonight about crucifying your flesh, about daily crucifying, which means it's going to hurt, right? Because mm -hmm. we made a vow, and the vow was not just to the person, it was to, it was to God, too. So we'll say, you know, um, I'm, I'm with you, you know, even if you don't have money, even if you don't work, even if you get sick, I'm going to be with you to death do us part. And it's first time they lost their job, they lost their, their spouse. <laughs> and the spouse didn't die. Because no I was only with you because you got paid. Mm -mm. Oh, or I was with you because, you know, you made me look good. Amen. And now that you're begging, I, 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 didn't, I didn't sign up for that. Mm -mm. Yeah. I, I, I didn't sign. I, I said the vows, but I didn't think that it was going to end up like that, right? I thought you would always be the nice person at you. I didn't know you were going to turn on me. Yeah. Mm -mm. So when you turn on me, I turned out. I'm just, oh. Minister, can we say that? Oh, yeah. So here are the disciples. Minister Shaquille, they believed that they were going to follow yeah. Christ to death, mm -hmm. do them part, mm -hmm. until death came. Mm. That's it. Can I say that? Mm -hmm. I believe that you're going to be with me as long as everything's okay, mm -hmm. Monica, I'm with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But don't let them sit around the church, Pastor. Uh -oh. yeah. And they got guns out there. Go. Pastor, I'm going to tell on you. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not. They're looking for you. <laughs> and, and the way, my, you know, I'm... The pastor, I, you know, you old, you know, I'm young. I, I, got, I, got, I got life. I got kids. You know, I, I got kids to make. Um, <laughs> I know you, you said that, you know, if you die, you know, you're going to be in heaven. So I mm -hmm. believe you saved. I believe that you're good. Oh. So if they kill you, you're going to go to heaven. Pastor, oh. I'm not there right now. It's the logic. So I'm going to have to tell on you, you know. <laughs> but I love you, though. Mm -hmm. you, you understand. I, I, I need to tell on you because. Yeah, yeah. I, I, she tripping. I just need to tell on you. Yeah. So. Y'all laughing, but Minister Robinson, that's real. It's yeah. like 
So where is our faith? The word of God says we got to crucify our flesh. And what crucifying to me means that you're going to have to hurt. Yeah. Yeah. It means you have to, you're going to have to go through some stuff. Amen. Mm -hmm. It's not going to feel good. Mm -hmm. So if, if someone that you was with was living for, I guess, living for Christ and doing what God asked them to do and got to the point when people were out to get them, out to kill them, mm -hmm. and you was right there with them, you was right there with them in the same house. And they say, come out if you want to live or if you stand there and blow the whole house up. Mm -mm. You look at that person and go, Bye. deuces. <laughs> deuces. Because, you know, he called you to do that. He, God didn't call me to do that. That was not my calling. That was your calling. <laughs> <laughs> Run to and y'all, we laugh, minister. But these disciples felt that yeah. they were going to go go the whole way. They were going to yeah. be at the end with him, and they didn't know that that they were going to succumb to their flesh. Yeah, they, I believe that they felt in, in in their spirit that they were strong enough. I we can mm -hmm. handle this. We've been with you. Mm -hmm. You showed us all these signs and, and miracles. We got you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Beware. This is Toy said she's running the tail. She, she done what? She run into tell. Oh, y'all go tell on me. And ah. I, I can imagine if they come and, and Cordell and say, we're going we're gonna to have to shoot her because she's been getting too many people saved mm. and she's been running the devil out of folks. Yeah. And so we, we're going to kill her. Mm -hmm. And whoever is going to be with her is going to die. All y'all will leave me. Jesus. She'll kill my stay. I don't know. But oh, <laughs> y'all. Y'all going to be leaving me. Say, Pastor, we, I got some more life to do, Pastor. I just. We will. I'll come to your funeral. I've been giving some flowers, Pastor. I just, mm -mm, no. You always said that you was ready to go home anyway. You know, you, you say that. So here she go, yeah. Here you go. Go ahead, Minister. So in the Bible. <laughs> That's right. She's laughing. At me. <laughs> no, no, Pastor Weaver. I mean, you, you, it's it's so true that it still happens now when people get caught doing stuff. Yeah. So people get caught now. If more than one of them get caught, what what do they tell you? <laughs> now, if you tell, we'll let you go. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And we'll just get them. And nowadays, there's a lot of people that should still be dealing with the consequences of their decisions. Come on. That instead, they just said what you did, and now they don't have to deal with the consequences of their decisions. I think we have to get back to a place where we really are day ones. Like, listen, I really have seen you feed people from nothing. I've seen you walk across water in a storm. I've seen you tell the storm what to do. I've seen you do some things that just don't make sense to me. So if I'm going to run and tell something, I'm going to run and tell that. When they ask me who Jesus is and can you identify him, I'm going to say, yeah, he lives on the inside of each and every one of us. Just look at me. Can we run and tell that? Instead of, instead of being the one to run and tell, hey, I saw Deacon Johnson at the liquor store. Come on, mm -hmm. somebody. Mm -hmm. Can you be the one to go to Deacon Johnson and say, hey, Deacon Johnson, can I just pray for you? I love you. I hope everything's all right. Can we be the one to run and tell something positive, run and tell something loving, run and tell something that covers somebody versus being the one to point a finger and run and tell that. Like we, we got to get to the place where we crucify our, our, our own flesh. Like understand that before we point out the, the speckle in somebody else's eye, we got a thorn That's in our own. Ours. Like before we try to point all these fingers at somebody else who gets upset and raises their voice that you were cussing this morning with the song you were listening to on the way to work. Like we got we to gotta remember that none of us are perfect. None of us go without mistake. That The Bible literally says that the best that you could ever on your best day present is a filthy rag compared to God. Praise God. So we got to accept that and be like, you know what? I'm still going to be the best version of myself. But being the best version of myself might include me loving somebody past and not being their best day. Praise God. This might not be the best day for them. You know what? I'm just going to pray for them as I pass. Like I've taught myself because I used to have real bad road rage. Real bad. Like I used to be. I used to. I was the person where you cut me off and you had like, even if you had bright lights on at me at night, I'm going to intentionally slow down, get back behind you and high beam you as close to the back of your car as I can for at least 10 minutes. Why? Because I had real bad road rage. But what God did is put me in a place where I was like, I have no idea what they got going on. I have no idea how their day went. I have no idea if they even realized what they're doing or what they did. So now, even when somebody drive past me fast, babe, don't I? I'm yeah. like, God bless them. Keep them yeah. safe, wherever they're going. God, just whatever they got going on, bless them now, touch them now, put them in a place of peace now so they don't go and, and do something silly or something stupid. And that's not because I'm so anointed or I'm so elevated in the, in the word of the gospel. It's simply because that was a place that was heavy on me and God had to crucify it. So I think there's a lot of places that are heavy on a lot of us, which is what we just read about in the scripture, where their eyes were heavy is literally what the Bible says. And I think that they gave, they gave Jesus a pump fake, right? So in verse 31, it said, we declare in 
emphatically, like passionately, so emotionally, so over the top that even if I got to die, Jesus, I'll never deny you. And all of us vow the same. We will never leave you. We will never forsake you, Jesus. And they convinced him. and He was like, OK, great. So then let's go up to the Mount of Gethsemane because I got to pray because this is so heavy on me. What does it say? Yeah, Sit here while I go pray. Right. My soul is crushed with grief. To the point of death. I feel like I'm dying now. Right. Because I know what's to come. But because y'all promised me that y'all got my back, mm -hmm. that y'all with me, that you my day ones, then I'm going to bring y'all with me as I go try to lighten this load, as I go to the Father, as I go to pray, as I go to try to make the best version of myself possible. I think that you're going to be my support. I need you to come support me and, and just be up with me. Just stay up with me. Yeah, just stay woke. You, just stay woke. That's all I need you to do. Stay woke. And he thought that that was really where they were, Pastor. I know. That's why when he came back, he was confused. The all-knowing God was like, y'all just said, whatever I needed, you got it. You talking about you with me to, to the point where you might die, but you can't stay awake. Praise God. You can't stay alert. Like, you can't be with me. You, you can't protect me for an hour while I pray. Like, you can't. You just said you would die. All You'll die them. for this. All of them. Yep. You'll die for this, mm -hmm. but you can't even stay awake for this. Mm -mm. The same as you are when you read your Bible. Praise uh -oh. God. The same as you are. Anytime you say, I'm going to stay up and read to my kids. I'm going to stay up and Praise the God. things that you know you're supposed to do is the things that you do not. And you anyway, know what? But that's Minister, that. that song that is, has gone viral, um, I'm going I'm, I'm to lay down. That after Sunday song that that girl did in Florida, I'm gonna, I got to lay down. I got to, you know, after church, <laughs> I got to go lay down. I got to go to sleep. We're going to have to play But it. some of us go to sleep in church. Uh-oh. You know, we come to church to rest. Best sleep you can get. Mm -mm. That's what they're preaching. Mm -mm. Sleep real good. Amen. Praise God. Because I watch it. Um, some of them, you know, just uh -oh. on the front row. Hey, Sister Rosetta. Uh -oh. Sleeping. Sister Whitaker, God bless you. It's, praise God. Oh, they laughing because it's so real. <laughs> how many church, how many people got in the church that have sleep, sleep, was it sleep? Insomnia. Uh, is sleep it apnea. Some? Apnea. You it's know, not. just can't help it. Amen. As soon as praise and worship over with, and they got five minutes of the word. Uh-oh. Uh <laughs> they sleeping. Now, as soon as praise and worship, they up, they clapping, they dancing. Come on. Falling out, but as soon as the, the word come, oh, we got sleep. I'm tired, Pastor. You know, I, I was up all night. You was up all night when you was up there clapping too. Oh, but now that the word coming, I'm just saying, can you just for an hour? I'm like Jesus. Can you um, can you can you can you stand for an hour? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Just just one hour, cause the, yeah. I ain't gonna preach no more than an hour. Sometimes it be 30 minutes. You sleep in 10 minutes. You 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 sleep. I don't know how um, true that is, y'all, but that was free. <laughs> and they laughing because it's real. Can can we just stay woke in church? But can you stay woke in church? Yeah. Just take a nap before you come to church. I mean, oh. just wake up. Pastor and I had to work all night. Okay, but you was up all night working. <laughs> and you can't stay woke 30 minutes in church? Mm. Oh, I can, I can hear the Holy Ghost on the, on the, on the, on the, in the, in the air. Y'all, it's quiet in here right now. It's quiet in church. Is it quiet where you at at home? Are you the one that fall asleep in church? Oh, my Lord. Talk about crucifying your flesh. Tell your flesh, you're going to stay woke for 30 minutes. Yeah. You're going to stay woke for 45 minutes. And don't look at your clock and tell me, how long they going to preach? Yeah. You yeah. know, they preaching the whole Bible. They got the whole chapter. <laughs> they just need to get one chapter. That's all I need, just one chapter. Really? Okay. Glory to God. Here, yeah. Oh, I feel, oh, y'all don't want to hear this. Oh, here it comes. So, Jesus knew, he knew, Minister Robinson, in verse one of chapter 14, that they had already conspired to kill him. He already knew that. Right. And so when he talked to them to stay woke for an hour, he already knew they were coming. He knew that that was the night, that was the hour. Right. And so he was trying to encourage them to, to just pray. Can y'all just pray? And, and mainly, you know, pray for, you pray for yourself. Because what happened is he was getting ready to be taken out of the world. And so he knew where they were in, in, in spirit. Right. So he was trying to tell them, crucify your flesh. Tell your flesh, oh, we're going to stay up for this hour. We're going we gonna to pray for him. We're going to tell your flesh, no, you're not going to sleep. You know, you can command your flesh to stay up. You know, we say, that's all I'm going to command my soul to praise the Lord. I'm going to command my soul to clap my hands. Command your soul to stay awoke, to wake up. Amen? Praise God. Minister, what happened? Verse 1 and chapter 14. You got it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mark 14, one. verse 1. Mm -hmm. It was now two days before Passover in the festival of unleavened bread. The leading priests and the teachers of religious law were still looking for an opportunity to capture Jesus secretly and kill him. Mm -hmm. But not during the Passover celebration, they agreed or the people may riot. Meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany 
at the home of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. While he was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume made from the essence of nard. She broke open the jar and poured the perfume over his head. Okay, we're not even, that's a whole well, nother sermon. That's the mm -hmm. truth. Mm -hmm. That was, that happened the night before he was being betrayed, Minister Robinson. Right. Mm -hmm. So here we are, we're going back to 38. And we're talking right now about him asking them, can you stay up an hour? And he's telling us, we got to watch and pray. Yeah. We got to, y'all, watch and pray. Let's what? Let's we enter into temptation. temptation. The spirit is what? The spirit is willing, but the flesh is, say it again. Weak. I can't hear y'all. The spirit is the spirit willing. Is willing. The flesh is weak. weak. And his disciples told him, oh, we're willing to die for you. We, we, we're going we're gonna to go all the way with you. But, but their flesh was, was what? Weak. weak. Minister, daily crucifixion. Amen. And what does that mean when I say daily crucifying yourself? Daily. What does that mean? It means that every day I'm going to have to find, find something in myself that is only living in my flesh. Wow. So to, to, to make the choice to crucify crucified daily daily crucifixion means i'm making a conscious decision that there's something that is feeding my flesh today that has to die mm. there is something that is that is that is grown and something that is still living in my flesh that has to die because flesh has to die for spirit to have room so we have to make daily decisions that you know what i know i have an attitude problem i'm going to in be intentional about how i treat people i know that i have road rage i got to be intentional about where i drive don't go down 24. Like, we have to be intentional about crucifying our fleshly desires, our fleshly wants, and our fleshly, what we consider needs. The things that we feel like, I gotta get some get back. What's amazing to me here in the story is, yeah, we talked about that they were in Passover. We talked about that they were beginning the unleavened bread and that he already knew they were about to betray him. But when we go down to verse 32, Pastor, and we talk about them being at a place where they were saying, I'll die for this, I'll, I'll do whatever I gotta do just to be with Jesus. What has happened? To us saying, God, whatever it takes, I'm going to do it. When as soon as they said, you can't sing in church, we stopped going. Mm. When we said, like, God, whatever, whatever you need of me, God, use me however you see fit. And you ain't been to church in a year. And when you came, you don't work in church no more. You just come and you show up and you sit mm. in the back and you relax. And then as soon as they do the, the benediction, you're gone and they can't see you. Agree. You used to sit outside talking for 45 minutes. But now... You said at one point, God, whatever you need, God, whatever you want, I'm for it. And then things got difficult and you decided, nope, I'm going to leave that over there for them Jesus folks. And the part that's interesting to me is there's a common phrase, Pastor, that's used now um, to personify people that feel like they have the sauce, they have the juice, they are, you know, popular um, or they're beautiful or they're charismatic. Like there's one phrase that they say to people to tell them that you missed the fact that I'm so amazing. And that phrase is, don't sleep on me. Oh. The phrase that they say is, you can sleep on her, you can sleep on that, but don't you sleep on me. It means when it comes to me, be alert, be awake, know that I got the sauce, know that I'm all of this wrapped up in this package. And I, I, it, it tickles me because the King of Kings and Lord of Lords walking around in flesh looked at the disciples like, how y'all gonna sleep on me? Right. Out of all right. people to sleep on. And I think we still sleep on Christ we now. Do. Mm. We had a place now where we, we still, he's still up there praying for us. He's still sitting high looking low. He's still waiting for us to be there praying to strengthen ourselves and praying for our relationship and connection and covering of Christ. And instead he come to find us sleep. Praise not God. just in the church, not just physically, but your, your spirit been asleep all year. Praise you ain't God. woke your spirit up for nothing. Your, your spirit has not showed up for church in a year and a half. Your spirit has not showed up at work in a year and a half. Your spirit is no longer in your relationship and you're wondering why all the things of flesh are coming to fruit. Why all these different areas of flesh are now what you're dealing with and fighting against because your spirit ain't showed up. Your spirit sleep. Praise God. You know, he said we got to work our salvation out. Mm -hmm. And to me, work means movement. Yeah. Work means doing something. Working your own salvation out with fear. And trembling. And trembling. Yeah. I mean, fear and trembling. And, and for me, this story is telling me, Minister Chiquil, it's just like when you deny yourself, it means that you, it's like you, you're afflicted and, and, you, and you're feeling extreme punishment, but you got to go through it. You might be crying and, you, and, and it, it feels uncomfortable, but it's for purpose. You know, a lot of times, you know, you, you want, especially families to accept you or, or to, to see you the way God sees you, and they won't. Right. Mm -hmm. And they won't. They don't. They can't. 
Amen. Because you're spiritual and they're still in the flesh. And, and, but we want that validation, Monica. We want them to, to um, just accept us. And when they don't, yo, it's, it's, can I be honest? It's painful. When everyone outside can see the spirit in you, but the ones in your house, yeah, yeah. the ones in your house, and, and sometimes they, they, they're like your worst enemies. Yeah. The ones that you grew up with, the ones that you said I do to, those are the ones, y'all, that we have to crucify this flesh. We're trying to be a light in the midst of darkness. And it don't feel good when they say things to us and when they treat us certain kind of ways, it don't feel good. But by the grace of God, mm-hmm. you know, the word of God talks about the unsaved spouse can help the ones that's not saved get saved because of how you live. Yeah. Right. So they don't need you fussing and, and cussing and drinking Uh-oh. them down, you know, too. Mm-hmm. They need for you to be the light. Right. And so crucifying your flesh means sometimes you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to go without. Sometimes you're going to have to just take one for the team. Uh-oh. Sometimes you're going to have to just let them say it. You know what? I'm going to go in the bathroom and, cry and, and pray because I, I, I can't. So I think we sleep because a lot of times when you're depressed, what you do? Sleep. You sleep. Mm-hmm. And when you don't know what else to do, what you do? <laughs> sleep. <laughs> and so you think that when you wake up, it's going to change because you just took a nap. Yeah. You know, we'll get so tired and so weighted down. I just, I just need to go to sleep. What yeah. does that do? Because it's going to still be the same thing when you wake up. Facts. So, But we get so heavy burden, and all we want to do is just take a nap. Yeah. I need to sleep on this. Yeah. And you sleep on it, and you, you had nightmares when you were sleeping. So you woke up, and it got worse. So it's best to go ahead and, and, and deny yourself and yeah. be the bigger person and just go and apologize, even when you didn't do nothing. Just apologize, and you know what? I, I apologize to you. And they'll look at you like, what? You know, because it's hard to argue with, you know, one person can't argue by themselves. So they have an a, a, a argument and, and you decide to, you know what, I'm just going to calm this down. I'm just going to apologize. And they look at you like, what? They, they're quiet. Yeah. Or you take a nap and you take a nap and they're just waiting for you to wake up so they can still go upside your head. Because <laughs> they're mad. How many of us are, are just sleep, want to sleep? They're like, I just want to go to sleep. you watching Minutes, you sleep. I just want to go to sleep. You know, I, come on. You're all out there fussing and fighting and, and I, I'm, 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 in, I'm in the situation right here. I don't know what to do with it. I just need to take a nap. So here's the disciples. I think they were heavy. And I think they kind of heard him. But because of, of where they were, they just got tired. How many Christians right now just tired? I'm tired. You know, going to sleep on Sunday morning and feel better than coming to church. I ain't got to get dressed or nothing. I just, mm. you know, I got, I got bed ministry. Yeah. I'm, I'm asleep, minister. Praise the Lord. And I can watch y'all later, you know, because y'all going to record it anyway, so I can watch y'all at 2 o'clock. Uh-oh. Praise Uh-oh. the Lord. I ain't got to be there at 11 o'clock. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So how many of, oh, they, look, mm. I got, they looking at me in church like, Pastor, stop. So we need to stay woke. We need to wake up and understand mm. that God is requiring for us, Minister Robinson, to be on purpose. Yeah, to, to to make to make the sacrifice. Always. to crucify our flesh. You know, just get dressed. Mm-hmm. You know, put your makeup on. Yeah, and and get your car and, and go to church. Amen. It's time for us to crucify, Minister Robinson, to tell this flesh not even. No, it's it's you've been a year and a half. Yeah, having your way. Okay, now it's time for us to take back everything that. The enemy thought he took from us. Amen. Take back our families. Take back our position in the yeah. kingdom. Yeah. Take back the, the anointing. Take back the power. Take it back. Praise you know, God. people come right now and, and not realizing that God is still the same God. He's still a healer, the del- deliverer. And we sing that song, a way maker, miracle, miracle worker, worker, a promise, promise keeper, keeper, a light in the darkness. darkness. He's still all of that. Mm-hmm. He's all of that. Mm-hmm. But we got to learn how to operate in that. Minister tonight, yeah. just crucifying your flesh. Yeah. Tell your flesh, no. Amen. Tell your flesh, what? No. no. We can't even tell other people no. Ooh. We want to tell them no, but we always say yeah, and then we end up, how come they, because you told them yeah. Mm-hmm. Tell them no. Mm-hmm. No, we're not going to do this. No, we can't have that. No, I'm not giving you my money. No. Yeah. But we, because I want to be your friend. No. no. I learned how to say no a long time ago. Got delivered. So Amen. right here, who's. Amen. Let me slow down, because they're just looking like pastor. For real. I know it hurt. That's tight, but it's right. So it's time for us to mm-hmm. crucify mm-hmm. This, this flesh Amen. and allow God to do what he wants to do in us. It's time for us to be strong warriors, Minister yeah. Robinson. It's time for us to be militant. It's time for us, y'all, to, to take everything back. Yeah. That A year and a half, yeah. the world is reopening, y'all, and we still closing. We still like, you know what, I don't know if I'm going to church. I don't know, COVID in there. 
COVID in the walls. I, I just can't. But, you, but you're going to the mall. You're mm-hmm. going on vacation. You know, everything else. You're going to restaurants. Yeah. But when it comes to the house of God, you know, I just, I can't, you know, I, I, I can't do that. And you're not even wearing a mask out there. We're going to have to vaccinate the carpet. Vaccinate what? You're going to have to vaccinate the carpet. The walls. Vaccinate mm-hmm. the light bulbs. I don't think a needle go through the walls, y'all. I'm just to my church folk, right? So it's time for us to crucify Minister Robinson and mm-hmm. to be about our father's business. Mm-hmm. You can go ahead. And I know mm-hmm. y'all, I give them the soapbox, but this thing is so real oh, yeah. for us just to stay woke. It's time for us to, to, to go back out there and win the, the, the loss for Christ, to make a difference in the earth because the earth is sitting there looking for us and y'all, we just sleep. Yeah. yeah. Sleep, yeah. snoring. You even take that, what's that, what you do, what you take to go to sleep? The melatonin, what you call that? Melatonin. Melatonin, take that, go to sleep, sleeping good. <laughs> and give me two of them. <laughs> Church folk. Yeah. You can't fall, so if you're gonna make yourself go to sleep, give me two of those. Yeah. And even NyQuil, you're doing everything you can to go to sleep. Go ahead, Minister Robinson. I think the only difference between being- Wake up. <laughs> <laughs> the only difference between being asleep and being dead is that you, you still have an opportunity to wake up. Mm-hmm. So we've been at a place where we've been asleep in our relationship, in our desire for Christ. And Come on. The only reason that where you are spiritually asleep versus day is because God is still giving you an opportunity Praise God. to wake up. To wake up. God is still giving you an opportunity to turn from your wicked ways. He's still giving you an opportunity to pursue him for yourself. He is still coming, trying to wake you up. Every time he comes down off the mount, which to me, there was no reason to come down. He was in prayer. Why did you come down to see if they were asleep or not? Why did Jesus come down to check on them? They supposed to be covering for him. Mm-hmm. There was no reason for him to cease in his praying. He used to pray without ceasing as he normally does. Praise God. But instead, he, he wanted us to know that there is an opportunity where he's going to wake you up and say, hey, now can you stay woke? And he says stuff to us like crucify your flesh daily, like daily crucifixion. Why did he say crucify your flesh instead of kill it? Mm. Killing it is quick. Killing it is easy. But to crucify mm. something takes work. Mm-hmm. To crucify something means it got to be, it, it's severe. It hurts. To crucify something, literally by definition, to crucify something is death, death of someone or something by nailing it to a cross to make it a sign. Wow. That's what crucifixion is. So if we're crucifying our flesh, it means we are intentional and severely killing it, like making sure it don't come back. You know, like when you see a bug in your house and you don't stomp it once, like you stomp it the one time and then you stomp it two more times. And then when you pick it up with the napkin, you squeeze the napkin just to make sure it don't crawl around in your trash can. That's crucifying versus killing, right? So he's saying you got to crucify the desires of your flesh. I know y'all know what I'm talking about. We in Georgia. Come on now. You got you to crucify those things. And it's, it's so intentional and so specific. And then the ending of what crucify means is, yes, it's, it's killing by being nailed upon the cross. What else do we nail upon the cross? Lists, signs, examples. It is meant to remind you, yep, you used to deal with that. Mm-hmm. Yep, you used to be that. Yep, that used to be exactly how you hung out. Mm-hmm. Now you're supposed to let that thing sit on the cross and just be an example to people who pass by your life. Okay. People who look into who you are now should be able to see, yes, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. Yes, you operate in your anointing. My God. Yes, you are gifted. However, I ain't wake up like this. Praise God. When God woke me up from my sleep, from my slumber, I was filthy. I was dirty. I was naked. I was dumb. And then he filled me up. Praise God. And every time he comes down off that mount, every time he comes down from praying, every time he comes down from the heavens and he's looking for you, are you asleep? Praise God. I'm sitting here and I'm just leaning. Amen. Crucifying your flesh. And in and, and Galatians 5, it talks about how the, the flesh lusts against the spirit. Yeah. And you can tell which one is winning by our actions. Yeah. Because if you look at Galatians 5, I think it's on 17. It's talking about the works of the flesh. So this mm-hmm. is how you can tell which one's winning. And minister, can you go real quick to Galatians chapter 5, mm-hmm. um, 17? Yes, ma'am. Because the flesh is a mess. And the flesh will do things, y'all, that we are sorry for later. But while we're doing it, we enjoying it. Can you do um, 17 yeah. real quick? Yes, ma'am. The sinful nature wants to do evil, mm-hmm. which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants. Say that. And the spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the Spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. Come on. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, 
impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these, let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. So now you just mentioned the works of the flesh. Uh-oh. And so and he, this Bible actually was written, y'all, for Christians. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Say it again. Ooh. <laughs> Believer's instructions before. Is that part for leave it earth. So this is the way you test to see if you're in the spirit or in your flesh. Yeah. Now, if you just can't help yourself and fall in bed with everybody, it means that you're in the flesh. If you got jealousy against people, just hating on people, that means you're in the flesh. Yeah. If, if you cussing folks out all the time, that means you what? In, in the flesh. flesh. In the flesh. If you loud and just got to be seen all the time, you're in the flesh. Okay. So this is your this is your compass. This is yeah. how you realize it was written for who? Christians. Say it again. Christians. Not heathens. That part. But who? Christians. Christians. So this is our instructions. So he's telling us that when your flesh is in control, Minister Robinson, yeah. you're subject to act a fool. Yeah. Amen. Christian. Uh oh. And people are watching you saying, Well, I thought you went to so and so church, or I thought you I thought you was the here we go, praise and worship leader. I thought you was the, the prayer warrior. I thought and they're watching you, I thought you was a minister. I thought you come on, I thought you was over there. And so they're uh -oh. watching you saying, Well, now I'm confused because you allowed your flesh mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to be stronger than your spirit. Yeah. Because when you start fasting and praying, you don't succumb like Mr. Robinson. Don't don't run behind people in the cars anymore. He don't get um, road rage anymore because he's allowing his spirit man to become stronger. Amen. When your flesh is strong, you subject to all this stuff. Mm -hmm. That highlight this in your Bible. Highlight. So when you find yourself falling into one of these, yeah. just say, "I need to crucify my flesh." Yeah. Just start repenting. Yeah. If you find yourself doing any one of these right here things right here, y'all, some of y'all do two or three of them. Come so when you find yourself yeah. in that state of mind. That means your flesh needs to be crucified. Amen. Take it back to the altar. Oh, I felt it. Monica, give me time, but I need to keep going with this one. So, crucify <laughs> your flesh. <laughs> the flesh wars against your spirit. Your flesh wants to have its way. And like I said, when I was out there, I had a good time. Y'all, I did, but I wasn't saved. And I didn't act like I was saved. I didn't, I, I didn't go holy, holy on Sunday morning and be a holy that night. So, I was real with it. Y'all heard that? Praise God. So when you find yourself in one of these right here, Monica, what happens? You're in the what? Flesh. So, and the Bible said we got to crucify our flesh. Our flesh. Cause the spirit is willing. But the spirit, uh, the flesh is weak. Say it again. Flesh, flesh is, is weak. weak. Stay woke. Wake up. Can I hear what, are y'all awake now? Did Amen. I wake y'all up? Stay Amen. woke. Minister Robinson, stay woke. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Pick up all your feelings right now. <laughs> Pick them all up. Amen. It's time for us to, to be about our father's business. Amen. It's time for us to stop playing. But I'm not trying to sit here and, and make you feel happy. I, I want you to feel convicted mm -hmm. so you can get it right. So you can confess and say, you know what, Christ talking about me. She's talking about me. Because all that stuff in there they just read, I see myself on five of them. Mm. Uh -oh. Last night I did it. I may have did them today. Yeah. Praise God. But I'm in Bible study tonight. Thank you for being at Bible study tonight. God bless you. Mm. I'm so glad you're here. To God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Minister, mm -hmm. the flesh is a mess. Amen. And the flesh is subject, y'all, to error all the time. All the time. And you know when you're in the flesh, because when you fall, y'all, did y'all read what he just said? Did y'all read that? Mm -hmm. Highlight it. Put it, put it in your, um, Monica, Galatians can you put five. it in the post or something? Yeah. Yep. TikTok that one. Put it in TikTok. Oh Amen. Oh Minister, go ahead. We, we getting ready to close. Y'all TikTok that. Yeah. I'm in the flesh. Go ahead, Minister, go ahead. It's the picking up of feelings for me. Jeez. Sister Tori, pick up your feelings. Faith and feelings can't coexist. Come on. You have to understand that feeling, feelings will limit you, especially because you tell yourself that they're the truth, when the truth is the only truth that matters. And if you're dead, a dead person can't feel dead man walking. This is oxymoron. But if you have died, you don't feel nothing. Yeah. So just keep living. Yeah. Keep living. Amen. Minister Robinson is kind of quiet because he can't believe that, but that's real, y'all. But <laughs> come on. I think the only thing that I want to say, Pastor, is if you 
we gave a list of different things that, that illuminate that you're in the flesh. Yes. But if true. I can be honest, if you have to ask yourself if that's flesh, yeah. it's flesh. Amen. Period. If you need to ask yourself or go look it up and check, if you need to ask yourself a question, that it's probably flesh. Now you can read what the spirit does. I mean, the spirit mm -hmm. does, it produce fruit. The spirit, if you're in the spirit, it produces fruit. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to love, joy, peace. That's fruit. That's what you're going to produce. You're going to produce stuff. But if you're in, in, okay, go ahead. You want to close on verse 22, Pastor? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, let's close on verse 22. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. 22. Okay, praise God. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit Come on. in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross That's it. and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. That's it which meant God's got it figured out. Praise God. All we have to do is decide to operate in the best version of our spirits. That's it. And the rest will follow. God doesn't intend on us to clean ourselves up, get ourselves together, make ourselves presentable, and then come to him. God says, come, come exactly as you, as you are. That's it. And let him do the cleaning. Let him do the fixing. Let him do the making right. Praise so I, I pray that somebody uh, understood a different side of what God is trying to illuminate onto us tonight. Somebody understood that you can sleep on whatever else, but don't sleep on Christ. That's it. And tonight we have to be intentional about not following after our demons and being serious about daily crucifixion. Not just killing your desires, but crucifying them. That's it. As the Bible says in verse 24, nailing it's those the things to the cross. I believe that God has come here with us tonight and shown up in a mighty way as always by making his word flesh and I glorify him for always allowing his Holy Spirit to have its way in this place. Y'all hear Pastor Weaver. As we get to a place where we are closing, what I ask is that wherever you are, if you have questions, thoughts, uh, or whatever that else was imparted into your spirit, always, you can comment it, you can put it here in the DMs on the, on the church page or you can go to our website newlightinternationaloutreach.com we want to talk to you and if you have questions we want to answer them don't just sit there and have all those things wandering around in your mind and not ask those questions we want to give you an answer Praise we want to address it so with that being said pastor i think that we are at a place to close let's go ahead all right let's pray together Praise God. Father, we thank you for coming into this place, into this space, and allowing your Holy Spirit to have its way. Yes. I believe that you are the same God now as you were back then up on that mount, Father God, and you are checking and coming and checking the pulse of your people to see if they're asleep or to see if their spirits have died. And I believe that the spirit of, of God, the spirit of your children has just been asleep. And I pray right now for a spiritual alarm clock to come and yes. shake us out of our comfort zones, to shake us out of our resting places, to shake us out of the tombs that we've built and called them castles. Hallelujah. We ask that you allow your spirit to minister and move in our lives in a way that will help lead us in the direction that you would have for us to go. Tonight, Father, help us crucify our, our flesh daily. Help us resist the ways of the devil and glorify you at every turn in every way that we can. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. I thank God again just for you joining us. Listen, we are here every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. and We will also be here uh, live as well as in the building at 11 a.m. on Sunday, 1005 North 10th Street. And if you want to join us, please join us. We also ask that everybody remember that we are having a back to school bash on July 31st at the Chris County Recreational Center. Um, if you have questions about that, you can go to our website and ask them here as well. But we plan on doing some of the most amazing things from giving out backpacks and school supplies to giving haircuts to boys that need it, girls that need it, braids to boys and girls that need it, having different arcade games and carnival games and bounce houses and characters like uh, uh, Paw Patrol or Coco Melon, like all kind of stuff going on for all ages from the Coco Melon for the babies all the way up to to 
college recruiters there to talk to our seniors and get them ready for school that we believe that we have to empower our youth to be ready to succeed we can't just expect that they're going to wake up and stay woke Praise we got to make sure that we keep them alert we keep them focused we keep them encouraged and if you feel like partnering with that we need more volunteers and we of course need more donations because we want to be able to pour into our children the way that they need and the way that they de deserve so if you feel led to do that or to partner with us here at new light you can do so in a number of different ways by going to our new light cash app which is dollar sign n l i o or our new light p.o box which is there on the screen for you or as i said before going to our website www.newlightinternationaloutreach.com and whatever questions you have ask them and if you want to give to the bash just put bash on there just put youth on there so we can make sure we give them everything they want from the prizes to the purpose with that being said i love you i thank god for you joining us and I believe that it is in being intentional with making sure we impart these small nuggets, these small verses, these small moments. We can learn and, and eat this entire Bible one verse at a time. Amen. I believe that God is doing something new. We love you and we are excited about what God is doing in your life. We'll see you next time. God bless. He's got the whole world in his hands, in his hands. He's got the little bitty baby in his hands, in his hands. He got the entire world, entire world in his hands, in his hands. He's got you and me in my family.